When was your biggest I should not be laughing moment? This is my father's story. He was kneeling in the front row with his brother-in-law at said brother-in-law's father's funeral. My dad noticed that his father had a black eye and quietly asked him about it. He responded. He wouldn't get in the dang box. He said they were both crying trying to hold in the laughter. At a funeral, the catered food was exceptionally tasty. My dad leans over and says, Man, he should die more often. Hardest I've ever tried to keep a straight face. Reminds me of the funeral I recently went to. Family was eating at the reception and this dude starts choking. I think he inhaled a crumb of cake. And a cousin leans over and whispers in his ear it's okay if you die here. They got a place for you out back. And the guy started laughing which only made him choke harder. In the Indian culture when the girl gets married usually after the religious stuff and the reception is over. The girl goes back to her family's house. And they send her off to the new family in an emotional scene. Everyone is crying. Hugging. Sending well wishes. This cousin of mine wasn't really popular among the cousins. And while she was being sent off in the car. The brothers push away the car from the driveway. One of my cousins said get the frick out of Birmingham. I could not stop laughing for the life of me. I know when she looks back at the wedding videos she's going to be pee off. My grandpa had been on hospice care for about a month and was in his house. We were having a family party there, and it was apparent that he wasn't going to make it much longer. So with everyone gathered around him, my grandma whispered it's okay, you can go to him. He slowly passed away minutes later. My whole family was kind of standing around, processing what just happened when my little cousin, about 5 years old, says we still get to eat cake right. That's actually kind of sweet. I hope your grandma took it well. A couple of years ago my father passed away unexpectedly at the age of 50. He died at home and was not able to be revived from paramedics. Due to formality he had to be taken to the hospital via ambulance and the family was able to say goodbyes spend time with him before the funeral home came. I will never forget growing up my dad used to joke around and say always. Make sure you put on clean underwear and matching socks before you walk out the door. You never know if you will be hit by a bus and you don't want people to see your dirty jitch. I think it was more a way to give us crap about putting on clean clothes. Long story short, when I seen him lying on that table, in a state of shock, I lifted up the sheet over him and peeked at his feet. I started to laugh hysterically, the rest of the family just stared waiting for some reply. I said he wore clean socks. But I'm not checking his underwear. My sister was the only one who got the joke, and she too started laughing. In my mind, I knew my dad would have got to kick out of it. That is amazing. You know besides the part about your father dying. While trying to teach two elderly, nervous, Japanese ladies English and they have to make the sentence I take my recycling to the dump from a collection of words. Or add remove words I can't quite remember. I dump. I take dump. I take my dump home. Frick. I had to bite myself several times to hold it together. I was at a wake for a friend's grandmother. Out of nowhere, I hear someone across the hall yell who the heck pooped in the VCR player. I lost it. I have no idea if someone actually did or if it was a funeral home worker or what. But the randomness of it made me laugh uncontrollably for a solid couple of minutes. I was surprised I was the only one. Everyone else was talking softly or crying. I was laughing loudly and uncontrollably. That line was definitely enough to wake you up. My husband and I went to the wedding of one of his co-workers. Before the ceremony a teenage girl got up to sing a song. I don't remember which one. Probably wind beneath my wings or something. And it was real bad. Everyone was standing and watching this and I noticed my husband fidgeting next to me. He's putting his hands in his pockets and then taking them out and crossing them over his chest. I look over and he whispers to me I don't know what to do with my hands. It was my breaking point. Everything happening was so awkward and I suddenly couldn't stop laughing. I felt horrible. But I couldn't help it. My grade 6 teacher was telling a story that involved a student pee themselves after falling asleep at their desk. I started laughing, because I still wet the bed at the time and thought it was supposed to be funny. It was too late to stop once I realized nobody else thought it was funny, so I committed to it and just belted out laughter. Got kicked out of class and a lecture saying how insensitive it was because there might be kids struggling with wetting the bed in our class. It was embarrassing. 
I took a speech class my freshman year of college. The final was a 10 minute presentation about anything you had interest in. There were a lot of foreign students in the class and this on Asian girl gave her speech on ice cream. I kid you not her accent turned ice cream into butt cream. As cliche as could be and I had to keep my cool for the whole presentation. Vanilla butt cream. Neapolitan butt cream. But cream bars. Even the professor was having a hard time not laughing. When I saw Titanic in the theater with my first girlfriend, I burst out laughing at the end. There's this guy who hits the rail and bounces into the water in a very comedic way, complete with sound effects. Or at least that's how I remember it. I admit the bombing may not have actually been there. The Academy Award for the best supporting role of all time goes to that guy that hit the propeller. My friend got his phone stolen. What made me laugh the most was that when he lost his phone. He casually said, oh my phone, but then puts his face into his hands oh my case. My scratch proof case I nearly died of laughing. A friend's family kept various items outside in their shed, as you do. One day, their shed collapsed. They all looked at each other, stunned, and then almost in unison shouted, the turkey fryer. I was working on a stroke ward and we hoisted a lady over a bedpan to crap. The ward was silent but her crap was loud. Almost as loud as her groan of relief when she let it all out. I couldn't handle it and had to leave. It was that part of a long day during a long week where you're starting to feel crazy. I was laughing so hard Elle was crying. Luckily for me the patient had severe hemianopia and was registered deaf so she didn't give a dang I was laughing because she didn't know. Another lucky stroke was that my educator at the time was a chilled out a relaxed fellow and gave me a telling off instead of failing me. I'm 26 and fart noises and poo still make me laugh like a schoolboy. Another lucky stroke. Get a load of this guy. I broke out laughing after my dad's funeral. He was about to be carried out of the church and I leaned into my mom and said, You remember the movie Fatso, with James Coco? Would it be bad if the casket fell and dad rolled out? We both laughed, as dad liked the movie and found that scene quite funny. The priest looked at us, and we explained. He had seen the movie and smiled. Priests are used to funerals. They're much more down to earth about death than regular people are. My husband and I got news that his uncle Ted had died. My husband said Ted's dead baby. Ted's dead. I went into convulsions with laughter. I don't know what was more inappropriate me laughing or him quoting from Pulp Fiction. Alright. So a couple years back, me and my family all decide to go see a movie together. And we settle on some new boxing movie with Sylvester Stallone. It didn't look good. But then again I wasn't paying so I might as well go. The movie was as boring as expected. But when we started getting up to leave the theater darkens again. Some random logo pops up. So we sit down again. Then some slow, almost sad sounding song starts playing. Along with a photo reel of two people. Some pictures only have the one. It's a guy and a girl. Neither of which are attractive at all. At random places. Mostly in our crappy town. Due to the sad music and the 2006 Windows Movie Maker editing quality, my family and I sat rot laughing our collective asses off at what we figure is either an attempt to get back together or a crappy missing persons ad. Then, the music dies down and a will you marry me pops up on screen. Then, the guy gets out of his chair and pulls out a ring about 2 or 3 rows directly below us. To top it all off, when I went to the bathroom after, I bumped into the guy and he gave me the dirtiest glare he could muster. All in all, it was a very awkward experience, set right after the least romantic movie you could think of. 10 stroke 10 would do again. Mentally challenged gay boy broke into a rousing remix of Amazing Grace and moving on up and my best friend's funeral. We laughed so hard the ambulance was called because my other best friend had an asthma attack. I've told this before, but here it goes. I was in my freshman year of college when my mother died in the most unexpected and tragic way. When I was at her funeral, this old kind of goofy cousin of hers was sitting behind me in church. He's a big guy, probably in his 60s, and I suspect he might not be operating at full capacity, if you know what I mean. I had met him only once before. So it's not like he is close to my family in any sort of way, but he's just an odd character. So he's sitting right behind me and the choir starts singing. This dupe then thinks it's a great idea to start singing along. 
and I mean full blown Pavarotti type high volume singing. No one else was. Now, this was so outrageously hilarious that I couldn't help it. I put my head down and started laughing uncontrollably. My sister next to me started comforting me, because she thought I was crying. She puts her arm around me and rubs my arm while whispering it's okay. By this point I was covering my face, hoping no one realized that I was laughing hysterically. The muffled sounds probably seemed like crying due to the context, but I was laughing. At my mother's funeral, that stupid moment actually made that crappy day a little bit better. At my grandmother's funeral, you know how they talk about the stages of mourning? Well I'd already gone through the crying stage by the time the funeral rolled around. I just didn't feel that emotional at all. When there were speeches being made, I wasn't paying attention and my mind was drifting off elsewhere. I burst out laughing when I remembered a video I'd seen earlier that day. It was one quick burst and then I tried my best to cover it up. Stifling a few chuckles here and there. The person making a speech at the time noticed this, as well as a few people around me. He looks directly at me and into the microphone says how dare you. It was probably the most embarrassing moment of my life. After the speech is finished I had to leave just to avoid seeing the old man that called me out. He looks directly at me and into the microphone says how dare you. Hearing something like that would make me laugh even harder. Back when I was a hospital guard, a psych patient was brought in by the cops who looked exactly like one of the other two guys on my team. Same haircut and color. Same mustache. Same nose and bone structure. He was just a lot messier because he was a very disturbed person. It was dumb. But it had been a slow day and I found this to be really, really funny. We got called in to stand by in his seclusion room while the doctor interviewed him. The other dude was standing directly across from me. While the guy was being interviewed about extremely serious psychological and drug problems, my eyes kept darting between this guy and the other guard, and I just started giggling uncontrollably for like the 20 minutes of the interview. I kept having to pinch my leg to try and keep it in check, and kept failing. I'm pretty sure the guy thought I was laughing at either his schizophrenia or his H addiction at any given time. Obviously the doctor and nursing staff were freaking pi am surprised I was allowed to keep my job after that. Meanwhile that poor guy is freaking out wondering if anyone else sees the other him in the room. A little girl in my hometown had cancer, and there were massive fundraisers for her for years. The day she died my co-worker said, I want my money back. And I laughed so hard I almost lost my job. You did the only natural thing. That comment was funny as heck. I have an uncontrollable urge to laugh at the most inappropriate times. When I was in English class the new kid sat next to me and I asked if he was okay cause he seemed upset. He said my auntie died two weeks ago I bursted into laughing and I couldn't stop. I think not because of that but it was just so random and unexpected as I was already in a great mood. Eventually he started laughing cause I was laughing. Then someone asked why we were laughing and we said because his auntie died. We're good friends now. I'm glad this had a good ending. When I was 10, my 8 year old cousin thought he'd teach me how to control dogs. So he took a stick and started whipping his two Australian cattle dogs with impunity. Soon. The two dogs started to attack him and as he began crying and screaming, I couldn't stop laughing. I crawled up on top of a car and laughed until I cried. His mom called me a monster, but I, to this day, believe it was he who the monster be. It definitely was he who the monster be. The following scenario was by far the strongest I have ever had to try in my life not to laugh. So, I work the front desk at a hotel. A woman comes to check in and has her son with her, who is mentally disabled. He looks to be about 10 years old, but with an obviously lower than normal intellect and mental age. He has a stuffed horse with him that he is lovingly clutching when he walks in. He proceeds to quite calmly go over and obediently sit on the couch while his mother comes to the desk. I start to go about the process of checking her into the hotel, when suddenly the son calls for his mom's attention. He starts yelling mom look, look, look in his underdeveloped manner of speaking. I just happened to, oh god I should have kept my eyes down. Look up to see that the boy has taken his stuffed horse and is making it hump the arm of the couch. This is pretty funny, but I'm an expert at this and I maintain composure and keep moving along checking her in. The mother has ignored him so far and has not noticed his stuffed horse doing the nasty with the furniture yet. 
It's at this point that he yells out, Mom, Mom, look, he's doing what you told me not to do. He's doing it Mom, what you told me not to do. I'm absolutely breaking at the seams now. My mouth is twitching, trying so hard not to laugh. He continues, the stuffed horse now being made to hump that couch ever more furiously. Mom look is he gonna get in trouble? He's doing it, not me. He's doing that bad thing. Remember that thing you told me not to do? I snapped. I could no longer hold it in, and I just burst out laughing uncontrollably. His mother had actually not yet turned around to acknowledge what he was trying to show her, so as of yet had no idea. When I finally burst out laughing she turned and was obviously horrified. She turned back to me with a face as bright red as a fire engine and hurriedly got her room's keys and ushered him away as swiftly as possible. All while the son is still asking her if the stuffed horse is going to get in trouble like he did. I felt so bad for laughing and for her embarrassment, but that was just too much. About a month ago, I, a medic, got called to a guy that got hit by a car. He was hit so hard, his pants came halfway off. He was obviously dead but we had to hang around for the coroner. When he showed up, he rolled the guy on his belly to put the cadaver bag under him. I saw something on his butt and turned on my flashlight to see. Just as I figured out what it was, the coroner yells IT sure scared the crap out of him. My whole crew had to turn away so the news crew couldn't record us laughing. My wife is currently in the last stage of her pregnancy, and her emotions have been all over the wall. But sometimes I burst out laughing when she says does something irrational. This infuriates her even further, which makes me laugh even harder. It's a vicious snowball effect, and I am unsure as to how she has not killed me yet. Oh she won't kill you, but she'll train the newborn to do one thing. My then girlfriend gave a speech in the university student elections, which she lost badly in, and ended it with an Eminem lyric. She is as pale as a ghost and it didn't fit her character even one bit. It wasn't even a good line. I couldn't help burst out laughing when she said it. Never gotten a more intense death stir in my life. My great grandmother's funeral. I was a pallbearer. After we set the casket down and before it was lowered into the ground, we took off our white gloves and laid them on the casket. I still don't know how it happened, but both of my gloves had the middle fingers sticking up. My cousin saw it first and started cracking up. Within seconds about one stroke four of the guests lost it. Two. The rest gave us dirty looks as the casket was slowly lowered into the ground, giving us all a final frick you was at my aunt's funeral, sis and I at the coffin doing the whole stare at a dead body thing when she leans over and whispers brah ee 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 and so I had to leave the funeral home. Don't feel bad, at my grandfather's funeral, me and my cousins, who loved him dearly, are staring at his urn and making modestly priced receptacle whispered comments from Big Lebowski and giggling in between tears. People were staring at us because we were in the front row and couldn't help but be overheard. I'm a busty girl. My cousin's baby boy, who was breastfed, kept reaching for my chest during the visitation at my grandmother's funeral. At one point he stared directly at my tea, looked at his mother, and grinned. We were all freaking dying. When my cousin was a baby he was probably used to sleeping with his head on his mom's chest. My aunt has very large boobs. One day my mom was holding my cousin and I burst out laughing when I saw him grab at my mom's boobs and began moving them around as if he were attempting to fluff up a pillow. In early high school, we went on a field trip led by a teacher everyone strongly disliked. We were visiting a dairy farm as he lectured us on the realities of life on the farm. As he did so, he stepped right into a fresh cow flop, which went up and over his shoes, down into his socks and made a squishing sound as he walked along, red in the face. We all tried not to laugh, but being right behind him, I couldn't help but laugh when I heard the cow dung squishing with every step he took. I thought sure I was going to get into trouble, but somehow he let it pass without comment, just a look that said it all. That's why you always wear muck boots or walk on a catwalk. My brother and I got giggling and couldn't stop at the funeral showing after my stepdad died. Something about the casket having a freshness seal. What can I say, we use laughter to deal with grief. To be fair putting a freshness seal on a casket to never be opened again is kinda silly. My husband's grandfather passed away and we were at the funeral. My daughter was 4 at the time, and loves music. 
We rarely attend church, so she doesn't really understand the nuances and pauses in a service. When the music stopped, she stood up and enthusiastically started clapping and cheering. Everyone looked over at us horrified. My husband and I both busted out laughing. I just couldn't help it. I can't believe I didn't think about this until just now, but two days ago I was at an outdoor concert and I went early to ensure I got the best spot. I'm standing there at the barricade and a staff worker proceeded to trip, drop her coffee, drop her caseless iPhone screen first, with both her and her phone landing in the coffee which she spilled. She got up and started walking away while wiping off her phone to make sure it was okay, completely blind to the fact there was a ledge in front of her. She fell again and I couldn't hold in the laughter. I'm positive she heard me. She's dead now. I have a macaw, and parrots don't normally like pooping where they sleep. So when we wake him up in the morning, the first thing he wants to do is go out to his perch to take a massive dump. One morning I carry him out there and put him on his perch. He's half awake and starts shuffling over to his usual spot. He then scares himself by bumping into a paper bag that he forgot was there. Screams, awkwardly falls flaps to the ground, and then poops himself. You most certainly should have been laughing. I fricked up Thanksgiving two years ago. Every year our family reads a poem before sitting down to eat, and last year was my first time. The two last lines of poem go something like, as we sit down to feast away, we'll always be grateful for this Thanksgiving day. I decided to replace the last line with, as we sit down to feast away, we'll always be grateful that Stuart, my brother, is gay. I've never seen such a look of disappointment on my mom's face. I very quickly realized how stupid I sounded. So I sat down, put my head on the table and apologized for being a moron. Surprisingly, they let me read a game this year. And that's how Stuart got outed to grandma. Okay, for some weird reason, my brother and I could not stop laughing when we had to go pick out the casket for our mother's funeral. In all fairness, my brother started it. Our other older brother and sister were with us, and they kept looking at us too, like... Behave the funeral director was this tall, pale, skinny guy in an ill-fitting suit, the pants of which were a good 2 inches too short. He was acting way too schmaltzy, and speaking in dulcet tones. He took us into this room, sat down at his desk, and there was a light switch behind him with a red light. My brother and I looked at the light switch, and then at each other. Well, that made us both start giggling, and that pee off our older sister. Then, the director guy pressed the light switch. And, I swear, a door panel opened up into this huge room, the size of a gym, full of caskets. This totally set us off. We tried to one-up each other every minute or two. We walked past a bronze casket and my brother said, Do you have any gold caskets? Our mother liked gold. I interrupted and said, When mom had her colors done, they said she was a winter. That means she can be buried only in silver tones. As we walked past an especially hideous pink casket, I blurted out, she died we buried her in that, our older sister and brother, who were acting all were so mature, fell out laughing and my sister said, she's already dead then we laughed again, really loud and snorty, and the funeral director looked nervous as heck, jeez, it made me wonder if no one had ever laughed there before, I don't remember what casket we finally picked out, but mom didn't clash with it, whatever it was, oh, in case you're wondering, we loved mom like crazy. She laughed at weird occasions all the time with us. It was sort of poetic that we'd laugh like that when she died. My English teacher was telling a story about some guy that had accomplished so much and then he ended the story with and then he got brain cancer and died. I got detention for that one. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.